Ladies and gentlemen, nerds and comic enthusiasts, it's your boy, John on Demand, from a comic book look, reppin' that 605, Midwest, yeah, I go by many AKAs, but today, you'll know me as the comic book Hugh Hefner. So international and fresh off the plane Rep the comic book, look, hot's channel in the game They know Every they know. Wednesday load my stack into that plastic uh-huh. bag Every uh-huh. Wednesday load my stack into that plastic yeah. bag Take, take, take a picture when you see me I'm a, I'm a, I'm a comic book, Hugh Hefner They know, they know Pimping all these issues so easy I'm a, I'm a, I'm a comic book, Hugh Hefner Hey everyone, it's a comic book look and it's your boy John On Demand And what do we do here at a comic book look? We pop bottles and we read books. And I'm powered today by Stella Rosa, Stella Peach. Stole the whole bottle for myself. It's been a hell of a week. Hell of a week. Man, and I, I, trust me, I've been working, I've been working. So T- Tom and Skylar just uploaded a video and it was super awesome. And so I'm like, you know what? I need to get back on the ball. It's 2015 and I've been a royal flat tire, but relax. I have not been slacking at all, and I have some super cool things to share with you um, I'm super stoked about. So first of all, my birthday was last month. We had the holidays last month. I got a couple of sweet gifts that I just wanted to share with you, which is super cool. So first off, right off the bat, just for privacy, I'm not going to show the front with the address, but this is actually from a fellow webcaster, Mr. Mark Shelton, uh, the begging and boarding bad boy. I uh, left a comment on in his video when he was discussing this really cool gift, and I was like, gosh, I really want one, you know? Well, sure enough, he spoils me rotten and sends me this sweet Batman stamp set. Legitimate postage with a legitimate character. How when is that? I'm not going to use them, of course, but I'm probably going to find a sweet way to display them because that's pretty badass. So I, first of all, I wanted to put this first and foremost because that's arguably the most just fun set of stamps I've ever gotten, ever. Um, I have my normal stash over here that I use for cards and birthday cards, you know, all that stuff. But anyways, thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Um, I just, I really dig that. It was, it was a cool gift and I love getting nerd mail. It's my favorite thing ever. That's why I do Loot Crate. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Up next, I actually made mention at work that, hey, I happen to like comics. So my coworker Scott is a rock star and decided that he wanted to part ways with a sweet uh, combo of things here. So first of all, got to match the hat, you guys. International Walls over here, if you could see it. You know, I gotta, I'll gotta. probably show it to you sometime. It's, it's cool. Uh, Galactus, Silver Surfer, the Black Light posters right here. It's cool. Um, but he he ran with it, and he was like, hey, I have this sweet trade, and I got someone else to show you with that too. But this is a Stanley and Jack Kirby Silver Surfer trade with a promotional event flyer in the back. Um, now, he did advise me that this is... Gosh, yeah, this is um, from out in Berkeley, it looks like. And it's just, it's so cool. A Jack Kirby presentation. The flyer itself is cool. Totally staying with the trade. Best gift ever. But to accompany that, you guys know how I feel about wall art. So how awesome is this poster that I got as well? And it's rolled up pretty tight there, but I'm looking probably to get a frame for it. Ken and I are actually in the process right now of taking care of business downstairs, getting an extra room cleaned out so that we can use it and have it possibly be the home studio for when we film a comic book look versus when we're over at our place, we're always hanging out in the living room. It's super boring. We wanted to jazz it up. So this is definitely on the prime candidate list to appear in there because it is awesome. And I, I love that. I just was like, are you sure you want to part ways with this? And he was like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. So thank you, Scott, as well. Love, love. Love it. At work it was cool too because I stepped away for a second into this meeting that had to take place in another meeting room for an hour and I came back, my desk was all pimped out with like Silver Surfer decorations and my name JR and the Superman's uh, logo So and Batman logos everywhere. It was cool and it's just, it's so fun to see my, those around me I guess know my culture well enough to have fun with it and I just totally dig that and I just, I think that was really cool so anyways. Enough about the seasons, you guys. Let's talk books. So, first of all, I just wanted to let you guys know, I, I'm i intermittent right now. I am picking up a few new books, but truthfully, I've fallen off of a lot of stuff. Um, and I'll probably do a whole separate video about my rants 
and why I had to give it the guillotine. But for right now, let's focus on what I did get. I got just some fun, uh, fun covers, fun stories. Uh, you know, we'll, so I'll, re I'll review it one on one here. But first of all, I just wanted to touch on this cover. Um, Mark, I saw that you had posted this uh, picture, but this is the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl number one variant edition where Squirrel Girl is depicted as kicking every villain in the Marvel Universe's ass. Uh, Galactus over there just passed out or drank too much. I don't know. I will tell you this, though. The story was shit. Um, I read it, and it just wasn't for me because there's ways of having fun with a character but not being completely ridiculous and just bad. it's a bad read, uh, in my opinion. And the only reason why I say that is, for me as a reader, I hunger for continuity and relevance. How does this connect to the other books that she's appeared in or the team that she's a part of? You know, what what can I connect to it? In this book, it's absolutely nothing. Craven the Hunter makes a cameo, and then at the end they just part ways and it's all comical. And, you know, Craven the Hunter's a badass. He would have slit her throat upon sight because she's something new and he probably would want her hide with a big that big squirrel tail, you know. But... I just, I wasn't a fan. I couldn't get behind the character. I tried. I kept an open mind. And I bought the thing, right? So I gave it a whirl. I'm making an informed decision. This definitely gets a zero out of six beers. And definitely no wine out of my glass because I'm greedy. So, sorry, Squirrel Girl, but it sucked. All right. Next up, this cover really stood out to me. I saw it online before it hit shelves. And... This is the Avengers No Bullying Variant Edition. So, this one, I it kind of tells me a little bit more about what I'm getting into, right? So, Squirrel Girl is kind of a gamble. This one, I know it's going to be feel-good story or stories. In this case, there's three in there. You got the Avengers, Hawkeye is getting picked on, and at the end, see, I'm a valuable member of the team, too. Okay, you know, and that's cool. Um, you know, because what this is, I see this kind of stuff in a dentist office on the waiting room table or at a barber or something like that. They used to do this all the time in the 80s and early 90s. Comic books just sitting there. I remember reading torn up issues of X-Men while waiting to see a doctor. I don't know. If we don't do it anymore because, you know, everybody's picky and, you know, whatever. But I could see this as that. Um, if my... It, you know, down the road, if, like, I had a family, like, niece or maybe one of Ken's nephews... Um, you know, if it ever came to a situation where bullying was an issue, oh, hey, we have a fun comic, you know, read it, shoot, I'd probably give it to him. But I, I thought for what it was, it was cool, and it's cool to see Marvel sending out a positive message, and I really appreciated that. Um, I, I would definitely say the stories as a whole, meh, you know, it was cool to see the Guardians of the Galaxy in there, you know, so they're, obviously, Marvel knows what's working and what's not, and they're picking all the popular characters that are appearing on the big screens like Spider-Man, Avengers, and Guardians of the Galaxy, and putting them in these bully situations that are addressed by heroes. So I think that that's kind of, it's smart, it's fun, it's definitely, uh, you know, for, uh, it's it's a different kind of read, let's put it that way. Uh, but I bought it just because I was curious, and I wanted to see, you know, what was going on, you know, for Marvel's messages that they were relaying. So I thought that was cool. So let's talk about messages, and the only reason why I laugh is that one was about bullying. So this RoboCop run from Boom Studios so far, what is it, issue 7, ha this is just so flown by. So when I started reading books again probably a month ago, I got issues 1 through 6 right off the bat, and I loved it. It's mean, it's gory, I mean, F-bombs everywhere, it's, but this is, this is, this is what it is right here. Um, this is kind of what the movie was missing, um. Overall, I love it. Artwork down to the story, it's fun. It's a fun universe. It's gritty. And uh, I really like that. The, the, the politics struggling with the Robocop program. Uh, you know, just stuff like that that the movie didn't necessarily touch upon as well as it should have. I thought it was cool. Sorry, I just gotta wash it down a little bit. <laughs> um, I'm gonna save this one for last. I got a couple of other ones here. I haven't read either of these yet, but I picked them up just because I I enjoy. So this first one is Star Trek and uh, Planet of the Apes, the Primitive Directive. So a bit of a crossover, perhaps. I don't know. It's a blank sketch variant cover. There is nothing I enjoy more than going to a convention and having a custom cover drawn for me. I have a stack of blank covers now. Pretty well off. Probably about 10... 
10 or 11 at this point. Just a different different covers, Rocket Raccoon, Uncanny X-Men. Um, I got Ken like a Vampirella one and a Doctor Who one uh, for Christmas. So that's cool. Um, I'm excited about that and to get to work on those, you know, when I go to conventions here coming up. Another cover that I bought, and I wanted to try this book out just for the first issue to see if it's cool or not, of course, because of the movie coming out, is going to be Ant-Man number one. I thought this cover stood out to me the most, so I got this one instead of the normal. Um, and I'm just excited. The The logo itself is clever, having the ants in there. Um, but I, as a character, I'm kind of curious to see where we're taking it, what direction it's going to be. Ken already reviewed it, and he has his own copy and said rave reviews about it. So I thought that was cool. Um, but, you know, we'll see, uh, we'll see how it treats me coming up. So finally, I really just wanted to touch upon this one last because it was probably the best way I could have ever started my year with Marvel. I, I like I said, I'm going to be doing a rant episode about how I've lost faith in a lot of Marvel stuff, but this was a sure home run right here. I'm going to tell you why. So first of all, I want to introduce it. This is S.H.I.E.L.D. issue number one. So... When S.H.I.E.L.D. first came out, the TV show, uh, first came out, well, the show anyways, I ripped it a new one in terms of reviews. It was boring, it was this, it was that. Um, I, uh, want to retract those words because Ken and I had a chance to watch all of season one and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, uh, I actually don't have any complaints about it. I found myself wanting to watch the next episode after the, the whole Hydra twist came into play, it just got so stinking good. It was awesome. Season 2 is already available. We don't have cable. So we're kind of waiting on, are we going to buy the whole season and just watch it digitally? Or are we going to wait for it to come to Netflix in another couple of years? I don't know. So if we get bored between now and then, we'll probably just go ahead and get like a digital pass to watch it. But honestly, there's so much going on right now with TV. It's hard to keep up sometimes. Flash, Arrow, Gotham... Uh, Constantine, although that one's going to be falling off here soon. Um, not to mention the cartoons available on Netflix were Rockin' Hulk and Agents of Smash, etc. Uh, but anyways, the TV show is cool. The characters are cool. Um, I really like that it's in continuity with the Marvel U. So, what does a guy like? Your boy likes continuity, that's right. So, this is awesome. And I'm going to tell you why. Because, first of all, Phil is a badass, but let me just point out one thing here on this particular page. Phil, throughout the years, takes notes, starting as a youngin, he's taking notes in a notebook, Human Torch, the first one, what powers they have, etc. He's profiling people. In uh, high school, he's watching the news. He's profiling people that are appearing on the news, like the Hulk. So now that he's in S.H.I.E.L.D., um, I just love this. This is uh, Coulson depicted at age 25. Omega Flight is laying Baltimore flat, son, is what his boss says. And Coulson is researching the characters of, of Omega Flight on the computer screen. And those characters I know very well because I read about them in Alpha Flight when they appeared as a bad guy team originally. How awesome is that? So not only are you taking me back a couple decades in terms of Marvel content and making it relevant, but you're you're doing it in such a way that readers now are going to be like, those characters sound cool. You know, I'm like, I already know them. That's awesome. I I really, really appreciated that. I, I totally did. So there is another scene that I really enjoyed, and it is, it's just so freaking awesome where he name drops and it's something about where you're mentioning what teams, you know, what teams can we call in here? We need some help. And uh, it's it's just so, it's so funny. I, I kind of want to find it. But in a nutshell, hey, there's a crisis. You know, some of the Avengers are on it. But he's like, honestly, where, you know, if this is such a big problem, we should be calling anybody at this time. The, you know, the X-Men, the whatever. You know, and then he'd name drops the Thunderbolts. And I was just like, that is so awesome on so many levels that we're mentioning the Thunderbolts and Omega Flight, which tell it ties in the Alpha Flight, all in the same issue. 
The other thing that I really liked about this is that Tom was talking about the UK comic 2000 AD in the last episode, issue 129. And Tom mentioned that he likes the one and done formula. Right here. One and done. I think that what they're doing with this is they have shield. And then what they do is they're pulling in random, in a random combination of available Marvel characters to work together to solve this. And it's a one and done. Loved it. I am so sick of crossover events right now and things that make you buy billions and billions of comics right here solid marvel storytelling the universe is so rich in content love it and i just i thought it was cool i thought i thought it was cool i am going to definitely check out the next probably three or four issues just to make sure that it stays on par and that it's good quality but my god i mean these creators i'm not personally you know I, it, these none of these names are people that really jump out at me as oh my god I need to go buy this book I just wanted to try it on a whim and I don't regret it at all you guys surprise of the year so far has definitely got to be this shield comic so highly recommend it if you want to try it out definitely do and if you do let me know what you think a comic book look at gmail.com drop me a line for sure um, other than that I've just been kind of working a lot so that's why I'm not around as much um, I'm still reading books off and on Ken's going to be off of work here shortly, and we're going to be running to the comic shop to get uh, some Star Wars number one, maybe a cover or two, have some fun with that. But I'm just, I'm so excited about this year, you guys. We've got so many cool things on deck. A comic book looks excited to talk about them. Movies, TV, you know, just culture in general. Nerd life, that's what it is. So I hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome beginning of 2015. I hope it's just, you're spending time with loved ones you know, and you're nerding out, having fun, just have fun with it. Great community. Reach out and talk to other people. I love, you know, all these other um, people that are doing videos as well. It's just so cool to see the variety and the enthusiasm about our culture. Um, so I totally dig it. In a nutshell, I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome rest of January. I hope to check back in with you. I'll prepare my rap video and, you know, try to be not so mean, but, you know, to the point, to the point. So anyways, Thomas Skyler, hats off to you. Great, uh, hats off to you. Great episode. Ha, sorry, that was my phone. Alarm. Awesome. Well, that's a sign. That's a sign from above there. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap it up here. You guys have an awesome, awesome uh, rest of your week here in comics, and we'll check you soon. Keep it comics for sure, man.